Good morning, good afternoon or evening, depending on where and when you are watching this newscast. Welcome to This Is The Week That Was in Virtualization Cloud and EUC. Coming to you from the Virtualization Practice, I am Tom Howarth and this is the latest episode of our weekly news roundup. So, what was the news this week? On 24th of July, Cisco finally confirmed that it is closing its Invicta storage business. This move to end the development of Cisco's Invicta appliance and its scaling systems products has been expected based on the information from a couple of ex-Cisco employees. The Cisco announced the closure, they stated that the continuing commitment to working with market leading storage and flash solutions from its storage vendor partners. Now Cisco partners with almost every first and second tier storage with Hewlett Packard and Dell being the major exceptions. It was the Whiptail purchase that started to drive the wedge between EMC and Cisco and their VCE partnerships accumulating in EMC buying out all but 10% of their equity stake in the company. The acquisition has been fraught with difficulties, started in September of 2014 when Cisco quietly halted shipments of its Invicta storage product line due to what they characterised as quality issues in deployment. However, as recently as March, Cisco stated that they were preparing to restart shipping the Invicta storage blade and did restart shipments of the Invicta scaling system old flash arrays. However, personally, I've never seen one in the wild. A whip tail, yes, but a victor, no. So, what happens now? Does Cisco go back to the market to buy another storage product? Cue Nutanix purchase rumours again. Or does it partner more deeply with a company like NetApp with its old flash faz and new architecture? Personally, Cisco might find it better <clears throat> to invest in partnerships. Cisco may actually think twice about the one with Cisco NetApp as they're not exactly having a good time at the moment either. Personally, I feel that their partnerships with hyperconverged infrastructure partner Simplivity offer a better so option and solution. Simplivity software could easily fit well with their UCS mini solution. However, just because Cisco's pulled the plug on the Invicta storage products doesn't necessarily mean that the technology will roll over and die. There's nothing to stop Cisco from integrating the Whiptail technology with the UCS to create their own hyperconverged infrastructure appliance. Just thinking out loud here. That said, Cisco has really struggled with this acquisition. It obviously did not sit well with their core DNA. I feel it is telling that Cisco has a lot of storage partners with designs validated on UCS, but the fact that the only design not validated on UCS was one that actually contained their own storage product. Okay, so Microsoft announced their fourth quarter results and they had some bright spots including an 88% growth in the commercial cloud revenue from their Azure and Office 365 range of products. But there's no getting around the fact that the software giant recorded a 3.2 billion loss after a 7.5 billion non-cash impairment charge or write down for assets acquired in April 2014 when it bought the Nokia device and service businesses for 7.2 billion. The write-off is a sign that the acquisition hasn't brought the return that then CEO Steve Ballmer expected when he engineered the deal. Of the 1.3 billion smartphones sold in 2014, only 2.7% 2 were Windows phones, down from 3.3% in 2013. Fourth quarter results also included a 780 million restructuring charge and a 600, sorry, 160 million charge for a recently announced integration and reorganization plan. This is further evidence that the current CEO Nadella really does not see Nokia phones as core to their continued growth. In other news, the website Ashley Madison, a site for seek people seeking extramarital affairs, said that its systems have been hacked and the personal information of its members, more than 37 million according to the site, have been exposed. This is a long line of high profile hacks by high profile hacking groups. But with this one, the group commi committed the security breach are threatening to post the stolen information including names, addresses and credit card transactions, normal really, but also the fantasies of their customers. Unless Axel Madison and its related site, establishment.com are shut down. The group calling itself the Impact Team is said to be processing the site's practice of charging users a fee to have their information removed. The site's owners, Toronto-based Avid Life Media, this week began offering members a free full delete option, according to the Washington Post. 
It sounds more like a case of the closing the barn door after the horses have bolted. Now, a couple of hours before Apple was due to release their record third quarter earnings on the 21st of May, they experienced a wave of out outages for a number of its services, including its App Store, iTunes Store, Apple Music and Apple TV. Overall, 12 services were impacted by the chart outage, which started just before 10am Eastern Time and appeared to have been resolved by about 2pm. Now, Apple, of course, loses sales and money when the services are down, but there's also the embarrassment factor. Apple's Beats 1 music radio station, for example, was supposed to announce nominees for the MTV Video Music Awards exclusively around the time of the outage. On the whole, I don't think this will seriously affect Apple. As regards to their earning results, an almost 11 billion margin on nearly 50 billion of revenue for a quarter is not tardy. In fact, the company now make more money than GDPs of the majority of African countries, several South American ones and New Zealand. I wonder when they'll declare unilateral independence. OK, let's move on to some news from our sponsors. Extrahap Op have expanded their real-time data analytics product by delivering a specialised offering to enable customers to maximise the efficiency and value of large-scale Citrix VDI deployments. The ExtraHop Citrix model delivers an end-to-end real-time visibility giving clients a clear view across not only their Citrix environment but also the supporting infrastructure. Gigamon on the 21st released GigaSecure, the new security delivery platform to provide a pervasive visibility network of network traffic, thereby delivering multiple security devices simultaneously without attacking network availability. Manage Engine have released a new case study based on the deployments of Service Desk Plus with Ice Locker, the International Ice Centre based in Nottingham, UK, incidentally where Torval and Dean trained. They also kicked off Sysadmin Day on the 22nd in the, in the run-up to the Sysadmin Day on the 31st by releasing a video infographic and caption co contest. See their site for more details. VMware reported second quarter results this year and revenue across the company's divisions was up by 10%, which included a 3% rise in licensing revenue. What was important about these results is that it showed a reduced dependency on vSphere, which represented a mere 40% of the number against 65% two years ago. This points nicely to the long-term future of a company in the post-hypervisor world, with products like NSX and Airwatch started to generate more revenue. <laughs> 